Here's the ridiculous pants I promised to show everyone. All right, we'll try this. So, um, <clears throat> um, I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about uh, when is the right time? When are you kind of... Well, first off, two separate questions. When When is the right time to retire or move to Thailand? And then when are you ready? Um, and the right time to come here, I think, is dependent upon two. the two biggest things would be one, when you've wrapped up your, your family obligations back home. So if you, the age of your children may be a parent that you're caring for, you know, things like that. Um, I do see a lot of guys come here and they haven't wrapped up the, uh, the children issue. They're, they've still got kids that are younger that, that, that maybe need them, whatever, but there's an issue. And a lot of guys come here and their kids cut them off. That's uh, very common. Very, I, would, I would say it's so far in my limited you know, experience, I would say it would, it, would, it would sound odd to me that someone says, oh yeah, they're, they're, they're talking to their kids every day, it's all cool. Like, you'd have to expect, expect to lose some kind of significant contact with your kids, uh, all of them or at least some of them. Uh, I think it doesn't look good, to be honest, that you've sold your stuff and come to Thailand Thailand's got a reputation that's not undeserved, and uh, <clears throat> they're going to think you're some sex-crazed old man or something or something like that, you know. And if that was your motivation, hey, that's entirely cool. I'm not going to judge, you know. For me, it was uh, my son who I, I appear to have taken no hit with. Now, again, he's an adult with autism, and we were best friends, lifelong best friends before I left, and I believe still are. Um, but... Uh, yeah, I, I, you know, my my uh, ostensibly legitimate reasons for for coming here. You know, um, I literally can't afford health care in my home country of the United States. It's it's U.S. health care is tied to your job, and I am unable to work. So you're out, you're done. That's it. That's all it's got to take. As soon as you can't work, you're out. Uh, if you get some kind of good insurance or something provided to you, which I have coming, just haven't gotten yet, then okay. You know, maybe, and it will give me an option to live back home. And I was kind of starting to talk about yesterday, and I, I, I didn't finish the thought, but you know, I'd be looking at pretty close to two grand a month for health insurance for me, and that would chew up about half of my, you know, budget or something along those lines, give or take. So it would just, it would just cream me. It would just absolutely kill me. But you know, uh, I could live with my son. Uh, we have a very affordable apartment. We're in a great, great spot. There's a long line to get in, but we're in. We're at the top of the line. He lives there now in a one bedroom. The two bedrooms coming up. We're in, like next on the list. So, and I trust the guy that owns and runs it. He's a uh, one riot, one ranger kind of guy. He runs the whole thing. Runs it with an iron fist, but a very nice guy. And he's he's uh, an old school, honorable person. So uh, I'm, I'm not worried at all. I know we got an apartment coming. Um, so yeah, I could do that. And that's kind of my plan is to do two months there and 10 months here. And the reason for that is, is I can't abandon my son because of his autism, because of some of the mind games other people maybe around him might be willing to and, and continuing to play. Um, you know, that kind of thing. I, I don't want to leave him to the wolves, so to speak. So my word's my opinion. Maybe I'm wrong, but I doubt it. So, so the first thing is your kids. So, you know, if you've got young kids, you got to pre be prepared to really pay the full price on that if you if you come here too soon. The, the second big factor is your money, obviously. You need to be able to earn a living or support yourself in some way. I don't know anything about work visas, okay? So that's gonna have to be another channel or talk to other people for that. The only thing I can tell you is a lot of people work um, and don't declare it through the government. If you're doing internet, electronic, digital type work, it's very hard for people to know that you're doing that on your computer and not just surfing on YouTube or something. So, but it is very important. Please hear me on this. You cannot let people know what you're doing. Um, someone can turn you in. And jealousy is a big thing here. Think about it. And the average time makes like, in, in, if you're in the Isan region where I'm at, your average time makes probably 5,000 baht a month, 6,000, 7,000 baht a month. Getting over 10 is getting into where well, you're doing better. And getting over 15 is getting more rare, okay? 
Um, you can do the math, it's 34 baht to the dollar right now, so it's not a lot of money. And if you're pulling down, you know, 80 grand a year US, sitting at the Starbucks, and you're making a big thing of it, if you do that, you've got pretty good odds of being deported. And I don't know under what circumstances they deport you, but I'll bet it involves seizing your money. I don't know that, that's just a guess, but I'll bet that's true. But whatever it is, I'm sure it's unpleasant. So um, I wouldn't do that. But you can, and, and I know a lot of people that make a lot of money, uh, but they don't talk about it and they don't flaunt it. So, but otherwise, work visas are, are, are I hear it's very difficult to get one. I hear it's very, very difficult. You've got to prove unique skills. It's super easy to get one if you want to come here and teach English. And to teach English, you don't have to be an English teacher. You just got to show some kind of college degree or maybe even just college experience. And if you have college experience, you could probably go online and get some, you know, phony baloney, uh, uh, to try to not swear when I don't really need to, a uh, phony baloney uh, uh, certificate saying you completed your college. It, it, it takes almost nothing. Is, is you know, uh, And if you speak a teeny, teeny bit of Thai, it goes a long way. I've been attempted to be recruited a number of times. Because, um, again, for, compared, for most expats, I'm, I'm, I, can, I can easily brag and say I'm in the top 1% of, of uh, expats for speaking Thai, uh, but that still means my Thai sucks, Okay, just so we're all clear. Um, it's, an, it's an incredibly difficult language. And, and one of the things that makes it so difficult, just to finish that point, is how they speak it. They, they really speak their own language varies by dialect, by region, by frickin' street practically, and the patterns are, and they speak short Thai. And it's colloquial, heavily accented, regional, short form Thai. There's like, it's like seven layer Mexican dip of language. You know, you've got this, and you got to modify for that, and then that, and then that. And sometimes you'll hear me and you, Sunni, pronounce a word differently. And most of the time, I'm just wrong. 90% of the time, I'm, I'm, I'm just wrong, you know. I've been speaking Thai from day one for, for about three years, and with any level of knowing what the hell I'm talking about, maybe only, you know, a year and a half. And but sometimes I'm right for my region. And I live a half hour from her. Let that soak in, please. So... Anyway, so making money. So if you can, the best thing is to set up some kind of income in the States that, that comes here to you. Um, you know, I was an inventor with some patents and some passive income from that, but that's really rough and that's super tenable. And people are every day waking up. You've got people trying to figure out how to not pay you. No company goes, wow, this is awesome. We've got this technology from this moron named Rob and, uh, you know, we, we love paying him. The technology literally saved our company, makes us a fortune, and we love paying. You know, they don't love paying you. They want to screw you the first day they can. So coming here on the passive patent income, man, unless you've got a fleet of lawyers, and this has been going on for a while, and you've got it really rock solid nailed down, which can happen. And I hope, good for you if you can do that. You're better than I was. Good for you. Um, but you need something that's really solid. And generally, that's a pension, you know, disability, uh, maybe you worked in the military or Coast Guard, or there's uh, a lot of the county pensions, you know, um, sheriff's offices and the county pensions are actually some of the last good pensions, in the, at least in the Midwestern United States that I can see. A lot of the government ones have just gotten trimmed and trimmed and trimmed. The county ones really haven't. People from affluent counties, and there's a lot of affluent counties where I live back home in the Detroit area. Suburban Detroit has two of the wealthiest counties in the United States. Uh, they got to be in the top 20 or something. Think of how many counties are in the U.S. and think of that. Um, and, and some of those county uh, employees get, dang, they get like a fat freaking pension. And only after, and they're like 40-some years old and can, and can take their pension. I'm totally, holy crap. You know, if you could do something like that, you know. Uh, but once you've got money and you get your kids settled, then your odds of being happier here are better. Uh, a lot of people, they, they come here maybe a little soon and their pension's still a little small. If you stayed an extra two, three, four years and just piled up some money, lived in a cheap apartment, lived like, lived like a young person. You're going to live like a young person here anyways. Live like a young person back there. Share a, share a small apartment with somebody. Put an ad out and just work like a fiend. You know, make your whatever you're able to make per year. Stuff it away. And then, uh, you know, that helps a lot. I mean, because a little bit of money goes a long way here. If you have an extra even 50 grand, extra 100 grand, or, you know, whatever, that all will help. Back home... I, in my opinion, I don't think you'll notice that amount of money. That just won't change your, 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 your freedom and your, your ability to breathe and do what you want much. Here, that kind of does. It really does, you know. 
but I will get your money and your uh, kids settled and, and, and the kids really be prepared because I, I don't think I've talked to anyone so far. And I'm sure, I'm sure there obviously are people, I just, but I haven't even run across one yet that, that has a good relationship with their kids after coming here. The uh, ex-wives seem to really make sure that that doesn't happen, which is so sad. Why? I've never hounded my ex. I've never stalked her. I've never sent her mean, nasty, f off and die text messages. I've never searched and found her other social media accounts and messaged her there. I never went and called her family members and started any rumors or anything. And believe me, I got a lot of ammunition if I really wanted to. You know, but who cares? Move on. Enjoy your life. But women don't seem to think that way. My opinion. Not to be sexist, but men and women are different, if you haven't noticed. So I can say that in all fairness. Um, women use politics and social things and social skills and uh, more. And men just tend to just get pissed off and get aggressive or threaten to be aggressive. I think our way is better, but then again, I'm a male. I'm probably biased. Anyway, so that's that. And then, you know, uh, I'll probably get a little bit into, you know, who does better here, but more chill more wanting to go with the flow. People who are more, uh, still have their mental flexibility, can still wrap their head around different ideas, standards, cultures, and things, I think do a lot better here. If you're just gonna isolate, someone's gonna come here and just isolate and just live in a resort, live around other Westerners of the same type, and just use the ties for, you know, uh, bodegan service. I guess, then I guess it doesn't really matter, you know, but, and, and I guess that does work. You've got the weather, you got the, the cheaper living. You're going to, you're going to spend three times what I'm spending. And if you got that kind of money, I guess, good for you. Um, if you don't, then you're, you're paying a huge dollar for just cause you are refusing to speak a teeny, teeny bit of the language and you're refusing to smile and bow. But you know, that's probably a little judgy, I guess, but, and if you just take some basic language lessons, you don't have to speak. It is really rough. And if you don't want to commit your time to it, I find it fun. But if you're not really interested in where you'd want to commit your time to learning the language, and if you're not going to want to, I wouldn't, you probably don't want to make yourself, right? You're just going to be miserable if you're like really like, like, a, like a, just a non-language guy, 100% or something. Uh, you know, maybe not consider not coming to Thailand in that case. But, uh, you know, I would prepare though. I would prepare by reading up everything you can on the culture, if you just get along and smile and bow and, and try to be at least a little bit more humble, and that includes body language and, and posture and stuff, because we are considered big and scary to them. And when you threaten them, you're not, I think maybe you're not really scaring them, you're just making them think, how oh, they need to go call nine friends if you don't behave yourself. I've never heard of an expat winning a fight in Thailand. I'm sure it's happened, but I, I, every time there's a fight, the expat has lost. Like, I, I can tell you honestly, I've never heard of a successful outcome for the expat. So you really don't want to get into a fight. And I say that as a guy that misses it and used to really like fighting. I used to really love it and I was good at it. And uh, I, I, I still miss it in a way, and not in a, not in a mean way, not to hurt somebody, but I, I liked competition and stuff and sparring and, and, and getting better. I, I love that, you know. Uh, but anyways, uh, yeah, if you can just be a little more adaptable, a little more flexible, quieter. I'm still working on quieting down my big construction voice and my body posture has gotten more humble, more, you know, bowing and kind of leaning forward and kind of stooping down a little bit in front of people and kind of doing like that more. And the smiling is just huge, huge, huge. You just got to smile all the time. Um, and you need to do it from your heart because they're going to tell. They're going to be able to tell. They Smiling is like their language. So if you're just putting a fake smile on your face, you're probably going to piss people off or look like an idiot, um, which shouldn't be your goal here. But yeah, just that kind of personality just goes a super long way. But again, I'm super biased because I'm here in the Isan region, suburban Kalat. All this is specific to this area. Um, I think if you go, I know for a fact, you go to certain other places, it's totally different. Um, I think it's my, my suspicion and my educated guess is it's different in every region. But the smelling and bowing will be everywhere though. So you'll just have a much lower requirement of it if you're in a tourist area because the Thais probably just have given up on the expats there <laughs> and just think of you as a, as a wallet, which I can't blame them. All right, that's it. That's who would do well here.
Texas says they just opened it up, I think, today. Um, there's my professional driver. Um, I'm going to turn the camera around here in a second. We're getting on to a elevated... That's, that's the old highway, right? To Don't Gow, right? Yeah, it's the old highway there. Uh, so, we're going to come on to an elevated part, which will probably be uh, nice looking. There we go. Now you can kind of see the river a little bit. Uh, river Chulai. Lake Lambda Kong or something, maybe. Okay, cool. No. Thank you for supporting my YouTube channel. Thank you very much.